ठुलो रुख को हांगा में बस्ने एवटी चरी घर बना उड़े टिपी कसेरा मुख भरी यही रुख को फेदी में मेरे सानो घर बाघ भालू सालक हाथी यही वन को भर आँखा मिची बिहान उड़ता कोईली हाल छिन् भाका नदी बक्षिन सल लल यही वन को काख पानी पर्दा नाच्ने मजुर लुका मारी खेल मेरो जंगल र जंतु को कति गहरो मिल एका बिहान जमीन हलिं म झसंग हो मन खोजने वेदना को अंतिम बिलौना सुन्छु यही मटो में उब्जे यो मानव जाति कति छिटो बिर्स वन का आप्ना साथी टारा बा मेसिन को मुटू चिर्ने हल्ला यही महीना जन्म साल ने खै के पुगर्ला धूलो ने छोपे आकाश में कसरी उड़ला चील खस को गुड़ ढले को रुख अनिमानस को भीर मेरे सानो घर पर अब बिलाय हो भुई मं को भोग को पेट रार सो झोला सुक नदी में मछा को निशास को बोली तो चरी अज आपने घर खोजते होली कठ बरी कठ बरी This is the story of the destruction of a forest at a time when the world has never needed it more and it is unfolding in Nepal. A small country renowned as a Shangri-La nestled in the lap of the Himalayas. Stretching from the fertile Indo-Gangetic plains to some of the highest peaks in the world, this Himalayan nation is one of the most biodiverse landscapes with numerous himalayan glaciers and river systems feeding 35 forest types and more than 100 ecosystems it is a rare green haven on a planet ravaged by climate change its forests are a fortress fending off climate change and maintaining a fragile ecological balance making nepal one of the last remaining carbon negative countries in the world nepal ko kul kshetrafal ko 45 percent forest area le cover gare ko cha tes karan prakritik hisab le herda yo sundar pani cha biodiversity ko hisab le herda kheri sampanna pani cha jal sampada ko drishti le jal srot ko drishti le herda kheri pani yo sansar ko richest country bhitra nai parcha People of Nepal have always lived in harmony with the forest, using its resources and practicing farming on its fringes. But now this harmonious relationship between man and nature is under threat. In one of the villages of Nijgarh in the Bara district, people have gathered to discuss a new development. It is about government's plan to build a new international airport, one that promises to boost Nepal's economic progress and invite foreign investment to the region. Like all Nepalis, The people of Nijgarh are ready for a better life, higher incomes and brighter future. But should that come at the cost of their forests? Not everyone agrees, especially women. Directly affected by the gaps in dissemination of the resources and consequences of natural calamities, they hold a strong opinion on conserving the forest for themselves 
and their children. We as Nepali people are actually extremely, extremely fed up of staying in a status quo for the longest time. And we want change, and we need change, and we want positive things happening. This project is not only the project of the government. This is a project of the people. And the local people are the most vulnerable in this position. So if the, any kind of a voice against this project is, has started, it's not because there's a propaganda behind it. There are only questions being raised. Things haven't always been the same. But recent change in the socio-political scenario has changed the course of the country. Hamro aza ko socio-economic istiti, hamra afne sambabana haru, yeh ko avastha. यो हमरो डेवलपमेंट को मोडालिटी को निम्ति सभी बंदा मुख्य आधार होने चाहिए। इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर निर्माण, हमरो विकास को, हमरो आज को नेपाल को प्राथमिक एजेंडा हो, महत्व का एजेंडा हो। For centuries, Nepal's forests remained largely untouched and unexploited, mainly due to the protected area or conservation parks, which occupy roughly 50% of all forest cover of Nepal. One fourth of this country is under protected area system. That is why we are able to preserve so much of biodiversity still. The unfortunate here is, this is a highly vulnerable case. But the rest half of nation's forests which are not under protection, are constantly under threat due to unplanned and irresponsible development projects, infrastructural initiatives and political ambitions. There are different infrastructure projects that are taking place in Nepal now, more accelerating than ever before. And also many government-to-government -government projects uh, are also being signed in everyday basis, whether from China or from India or all other countries who are interested to invest in our country, which is okay, which is good. But any kind of development cannot be complete without understanding the whole environmental aspect of it as well. And any kind of infrastructure projects cannot be seen in isolation. Can any infrastructure project bring development if it directly threatens Nepal's ecology? That's the urgent question facing the proposed international airport. The proposal itself is not new. It was floated roughly 25 years ago as a bigger and modern version of Kathmandu's Tribhuvan International Airport. But long decades of political unrest had left its files to gather dust in the bureaucratic dungeons. It wasn't until 2010 that these files were reopened and the government issued a fresh TOR, or Terms of Reference, to conduct an environmental impact assessment, also known as EIA. In 2010, the scoping document was approved by the Terms of Reference. And that was the first time in the Nijgarh. Not much was revealed to the public. All they knew was that a site had been chosen at Nijgarh. मुझे गोए रहा बॉन्ड मंत्रालय में जो हमरे सिविल एविएशन अथॉरिटी में मुझे क्यों बने बंदा टेक्निकल रीजन निज़गोड़ में उन्होंने कारण क्यों बंदा खेरी वहाँ आले क्यों बने बंदा कारण गोप्य राखी नहीं था कॉन्फिडेंशियल उनसा बने बंदा अन्य आठ योड़ा बिकल पर 1996 में हिरियो रे 1995 When the EIA was finally made public, it opened up a Pandora's box. An astounding 2.4 million trees would have to be cut. 8,000 hectares would need to be cleared. Sal forests that were hundreds of years old would have to be chopped down. We are talking about an airport that is about to get constructed. So we have 8,000 hectares. 24 lakh So I think that one of the things I have seen in my mind is that I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. No forest option, no project option. 
राम्रोसँग अल्टरनेटिभ एनालिसिस गर्नु है भनेर त्यो टर्म्स अफ रेफरेन्स हो भनेको छ दिस वाज अ शॉकिंग कन्ट्रडिक्सन टु द टर्म्स अफ रेफरेन्स जुन मैले कुरा उठाए त्यो 2011 12 तिर त्यो कोरियन कम्पनीले गरेको फिजिबिलिटी स्टडी क्लियरली त्यहाँ के लेखेको छ भन्दा फिजिबिलिटी स्टडीको आउटलाइन मात्रै दिएको छ ईआई रिपोर्ट बनाउने बेलामा द डीपर वन डग द मोर स्टार्टलिंग द फ्याक्स बिकेम Standard protocols had been blatantly flouted to push the EIA report through. Alternative analysis pani nabhako approved terms of reference ansar chai te yo report pani taiyar nabhako hunale ra EIA report ka minimum hunai parne kura haru ke ho ni project ko chai project ko detail component hajur haru ko aadhar ma chai EIA garinchha. Runway ka huncha apron haru ka huncha तस्ते पर टैक्सी वे कता होवा अरु टर्मिनल भवन कह हो ट्रिटमेंट प्लांटर कता हो ड्रिंकिंग वाटर को कता हो कतई के देखिए हाईन अप्रूव भैया ईआईए रिपोर्ट ने ती कुछ अंडरमाइन कर सेंसन सिक्सटी एट अफ फरेस्ट एक्ट ने क्लिटली एटा कुछ के भाई फरेस्ट मन परी रूप में प्रयोग होने कुछ है यदि फरेस्ट प्रयोग कर एक दुईवटा कुरा माइन्युटली हेर्नु पर्छ फरेस्ट ल्यान्ड प्रयोग गर्दाखेरि एउटा यसले इन्भाइरोमेन्टलाई एडभर्स इम्प्याक्ट पार्नु हुँदैन सेकेन्ड कुरा भनेको यसको अल्टरनेटिभ हुनु हुँदैन किनकि हाम्रो कानुनले के भन्छ भने यदि कुनै पनि तपाईँले वन क्षेत्रको प्रयोग गर्नुहुन्छ भने त्यहाँनिर डिटेल प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट हुनुपर्छ ईआई पास हुनुभन्दा अगाडि भन्ने कानुनको प्रष्ट व्याख्या छ तर यसमा के गऱ्यो भन्दा डिपिआर देऊ न भनेर माग्दाखेरि त्यही आइटिए युज गरेर सबै कुरो मैले कन्स्टिट्युसनको आर्टिकल ट्वेन्टी सेभेन राइट टु इन्फर्मेसन युज गरेर मागेको हो माग्दाखेरि मलाई लिखित रूपमा सिभिल एभिएसन अथोरिटीले जुन नेपाल सरकारको एउटा पार्ट हो उसले मलाई के भनेर भन्यो भन्दाखेरि डिटेल प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्टै चाहिँदैन Disregard for the law was one thing but the proposed airport would directly threaten those whom the Nepalese people had vowed to safeguard endangered species in protected forests of Nijgarh Had it been only 8000 hectare I would not have bothered to say anything but the critical part here is that is adjoining a national park the most important part of that national park is the place where we have our native uh, wild elephant that is only in that person person national park the migratory route of these elephants pass through that 8000 hectare forest where this airport is being planned one of the alternative ma ke bhanyo ani parsa wildlife la pani yelle chai impact parcha ra aikao ko guideline anusar wildlife ko atha protected area ko nazikai yesto prakar ko airport hunu hudaina There are already numerous reports of devastating encounters between humans and wildlife. Lack of any countermeasures and safety precautions shows the ignorance of government towards the grave catastrophic effects which are projected in the EIA itself. Assessment should not remain as is assessment. Whatever the mitigation measures that is prescribed by the uh, assessment has to be made by investing on it and that's something very important investment on the mitigation measures and monitoring it correctly the hypothesis on the self relocation of wildlife from the destroyed forest to nearby parsa national park is highly problematic and also falls short to address the looming issue of human wildlife conflict going ahead with this destruction is also an utter disregard to international treaties that Nepal has signed to safeguard its biodiversity. This harm will have a ripple effect across the ecosystems, not to mention Nepal's number one industry, tourism. Nepal ma aune total tourist haru ko more than 60% tourist ले प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया में भिजिट कर टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेसन को रूप में हम प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया नेचुरल रिशोर्स काम कर बिग क्वेश्चन लुम्स इफ डेवलपमेंट इज द गोल 
Why destroy Nepal's most valuable assets? Most tourists they come to Nepal for its scenic beauty, for trekking, for its, for its mountains, for its jungles, for its wildlife. But if you are actually making an international airport of a big magnitude to bring in tourists, but actually completely destroying the only reason why the tourists come in, it also makes no sense at all. The quest for big money is now in conflict with Nepal's unmatched natural heritage. More so, it threatens one of the basic fundamental rights of citizens, the right to healthy environment. And biggest impact is in the climate change, particularly in the water. And the water, the watersheds protection, and the watersheds regulation, water are key fundamentals for human well-being as well as the biodiversity. The water is coming from somewhere and those are stored with the roots of the plants. The fresh air that people breathe, that's coming in from the forest, right? There are lots of, you know, good things that forest gives us. Anything and everything only becomes important when it comes down to humans and human benefit. When I look into the human side, yes, they say that building up infrastructure and everything gives a good economy and everything. but what is worth an economy which does not have clean air and water to drink in and you have to struggle for it. Once these natural treasures are lost, they can never be reclaimed. So what will happen if Nijgar's forests are cut down for the proposed airport? One doesn't need to look far into the future to find out. Today, Nepal ranks fourth in the list of most vulnerable countries on the 2019 Global Climate Risk Index. Delicate forest ecosystems are already coming under attack, like at Churi Hills along the Shivalik Belt, which have been ravaged by mining and deforestation, all in the name of development. अवतो मैं इसको चुरिया रहे हैं जब आटा जंगल हरु समाप्त कर रहे हैं चुंग गरी रहे हैं चुंग चुरिया का तो अलग सारा जंगल समाप्त कर रहे हैं चुंग हाँ मिले तेरे बात कह रहे हैं चुंग बनेरा पानी को मोहन हरु सुखी रहे हैं पानी पीने पानी को क्राइसिस ये खाती रहे हैं तेरे लिए गैरा जून वाला बरसा हूँ सब बरसा प सारा बाल वाला ही वास करे रहा कि ना कि सब लाय हमें बात कहे चुं जंगल से ही ने बोला कि बोला पानी के लाय रुकावट करो ते हाँ सोशन करने जाएं जमीन में टाइम दियो तो अच्छा ही ना जति हमें जंगल फाड़नी करें तेरी तरह का भूच है भय रहा था नदी कटान हो रही भय रहा था और बाल वाले तरह का उर्वर भ uh, particularly water regulation and flood plain maintenance and I think that's how the little river systems that originated from Chure and actually going through that, how that will have an impact is a major, some you really need to look into it. We don't have to wait for a future doomsday. In July 2019, just two days of rainfall caused heavy landslides across a whopping 32 districts. The worst affected, the newly deforested Churi Belt which is home to over 150,000 people across 13,000 households. The writing's on the wall. And if we continue to destroy our forests, there is worse in store. With our forests depleting at such alarming pace, it's not a surprise to see new pandemics and zoonotic diseases hitting the globe every year. When forests are destroyed, we, have, we will have a competition for those resources, animals and humans, right? We will compete from cellular level. That is, even the bacteria and viruses which 
which live in an animal as their uh, you know, natural fauna fauna will, sub will evolve. From SARS to swine flu, Zika to Ebola virus, and the ongoing novel coronavirus, the recent pandemics are becoming a cause of one of the most challenging socio-economic crises across the globe, especially for countries where most of the population still lives on the margins. The government is putting a kind of very good uh, suggestion that whatever we will cut, we will plant three times more trees. Many people have argued that replantation is the best measure to counter the destruction to the forests. When you take population of human being, you count every each and every children also. But when you are cutting a tree, you only talk about the big ones, you forget about the young children of the trees. These are the future generation of trees. And if you don't count that, you will not be valuing the true value of those destruction. Cutting down whatever we have right now, and then starting off forestation later is a very bad plan, I would say. If you had to cut a forest now, you should have started planting the other one already. And then even if you plant three times trees, the plantations are not going to give the benefit, environmental benefit that the natural forest gives. They might, but not before time runs out. There's not a minute to lose to save our wildlife. Despite opposition from many quarters and a pending litigation in the Supreme Court of Nepal, the project has been given a green signal from the government side and construction is already underway. A fast-track road project is being undertaken to connect Nijgarh and Kathmandu by felling precious virgin forest. यो fast track road रहते हैं अब वो चाहे अब चाहे integrated रूप में हैरे को देखी दाई ना कि ना मानिए अब road को road को component पनी को पनी ये आये separate project को रूप में या ला eastern alone project को रूप में हैरे को जस्तो चाहे लाख साल ले आर दागेरी integrated बाग को भाई आह international airport और fast track लाई integrated गरे को भाई चाहे और के प्रकार ले यार नुपार नहीं थी programmatic level को assessment गरे रपनी यार नुस्� Though this road looks like one of the smallest quantifiable parts of this massive destruction, the effects it can have are very serious. Road is just initiator of many activities which uh, brings in a lot of what we in our notion take as development. And from there then there will be a big settlement around. So that will act as a focus of other development, settlement and other things. Within 10 years to 20 years, the forest cleared by the road, maybe it is 1%. And then another part, the 80% will be destroyed by this kind of development there. Whether a road or an airport, it all comes down to the choices we make. We could choose unsustainable development by bartering away our natural treasures, but will it be worth the trade? When you have a project, you have to justify how this project contributes your economic growth, maybe your income, your income distribution. I am saying Raja Paksha Airport is a good example that airport is not just a good thing. Airport बनाए पर जी feasible होना पड़ता है, feasibility study नहीं सही ना। There's an absence of proper technical evidences, scientific research, and economic research of such huge project, which is, um, which is basically said to be having a budget which is more than the national budget of our country. If you see the cost of the airport, the total investment is 700 billion Nepal rupees. Then you have to add the environmental cost and environmental damage cost, both side, which is a huge cost. Which is not calculated in the produce side yet. 67 billion Nepali rupees when the body ka bhalu ko chahi roof cutting cha. Billion ma chate chahi. Atha ba 670 million dollar jati ko range ma. 231 billion Nepali rupees equivalent chahi. Ile jun ecological service di raha cha. 
तो एनुअली लस हो इकोनोमिक टर्मल वाज छ तर वाटर रिचार्ज एरिया हो तो अब यदि तो अब कंक्रीट भाई के होने रहा प्रकार के कार्बन सिक्वेस्ट्रेशन इसलिए कति कर ती सब कुछ लस हो निजगर अंतरराष्ट्रीय विमानस्थल को आवश्यकता छाइन हम आवश्यकता परिपूर्ति को त्रिवेणी इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट बाहे अब पोखरा और गौतम बुद्ध इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट बने पी यो देश मैनेजमेंट कर दिन ये यो एयरपोर्ट इज इनफ ए स्पेस हाउ मच दैट ए स्पेस हेज बीन रियली नेगोसिएटेड इज आई हेवन हर्ड अबाउट इट नंबर वन नंबर टू द स्केल अफ द एयरपोर्ट्स बींग प्लां इज दैट स्केल लॉन्ग हाउ हाउ दैट कमर्शियली इकोनोमिकली मेक्स सेंस इज समथिंग आई हेवन हर्ड मच डिवेड ए द The last part, you come the environmental responsibility, and that should be a uh, mitigation measures. If it's not being done, need to do more correctly, and that's the major concern for any conservation agency or any responsible developers' concern. It's how that uh, uh, the mitigation measures are enough to make it happen or not. So, यदि हमी एक ना चुके हों बने, निजगर इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट बीच में बनाओ दा बनाओ दे, यदि हमी सौ के ना मिलाम ची भाये बने यो. इसलिए देश को अर्थतंत्र यो तो डामाडोल होने वाला है यो नेपाल को सो डज दैट मीन दैट नेपाल डजन नीड अ न्यू इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट We are not against the airport being built there. The airport should be built if it's necessary. It should be built in that area, in that simple area, district of province two. But the, there are also different alternatives that have been cited in the EIA itself. We are not making it up. The EIA clearly says that there are seven different alternatives that were um, ventured into to make this airport. But these seven alternatives have never been actually. Um, Put forward by the government, why the airport cannot be made in these seven alternatives, and why only on these this forest land? The above, we say alternative site, but here, such a alternative technology, alternative methodology, or process, or or management system, environment management system, or so many things here, such a. Why we need this kind of airport? You have to insert this first. Second, if you need this kind of airport, okay, what size of airport? Fifteen hundred hectares, thousand hectares, hectares, eighteen hundred hectares. Then where is the right location? That is the right location, or you should go further south or east or west. Again, you have to justify. Then, okay, what are the cost, economic cost, and what are the environmental cost, and what are the cost for mitigation? It is not only about Nijgarh; it is about the future of Nepal. And if the government delays further, Nepal stands to lose a lot. We need to think of a program which is. Economically viable, economically supportive, but it has to be ecologically stable first. Unless we really responsibly work towards making those services, which you will continue to provide for humans and wildlife and nature, uh, then this will be challenged. The way we are moving very very fast, we don't plan correctly, we don't put the mitigation measures and invest on mitigation measures, uh, which is critical. If anything that needs to be introduced, I think thorough scientific evidence-based information needs to come into the EIA, and it has to be fairly evaluated, not just from one point of view, from multiple point of view, so that everybody gets benefited. People who are here right now, or people who are in the future. All we need to do is turn back and get into one, redefine and progress into a development in such a way that not only big. Uh, infrastructure and concretization of such places, but also by diversity and environment and wildlife and water and resources and health and happiness of a population is also taken into that account when a G GDP is actually calculated. In a post-COVID world, we need to think seriously about the health of the planet, and an airport completely contradicts that health. especially when it is liable to damage planet's precious green lungs will we still continue to pit humans versus nature or can we evolve a new understanding of development as humans with nature Thank you.
sun.